How's it going everyone? I'm Contemption and today we're going to talk about Guardians and this is more for people in newer kingdoms. Uh, 2826 is exactly who I'm talking to on this one. Guardians are very important, especially for leveling your commanders. I'm going to go about how I do it, what commanders I use, what commanders you can use, and why I use mostly peacekeeping commanders for doing Guardians. Most people know why, but you don't have to use peacekeeping commanders. So we'll talk about all of it. I'll go over the talents that I use, the commanders I use, who I'm working on as a secondary with those commanders and all that fun stuff. So let's get through the intro and here we go. Okay, so these guardians are pretty simple now. Uh, we are on, well, I my count is on day 19. Uh, Sanctum and altar guardians have been around for a while now. Sanctum guardians are fairly easy. You can do them by yourself by the time you're on day 19. You should. I am a, a low spender at 2 million power. I was a jumper before, so I did have a bit of a head start, but that's still the age of the account. The kingdom's actually pretty new. What are we at for today? Uh, day 11. So pushing day 11, uh, getting close to day 12 there, and this is how far my count's gone. And why it's gone this far... Obviously, I have pushed my gathering commanders, and this is something, and I'm just going to talk about it before the Guardians. This is something everyone should do. Speaking of Guardians, you can level them up while doing Guardians. I have three out of four commanders already at level 37. I'm not working Gaius right now. I can finish him with um, experienced tomes once I get enough. But you want gathering commanders in an early account up to level 37 as fast as possible. And this is the reason why. Well, there's two reasons actually. This needs to be level 27 so you can get, you know, three or four gathering commanders to 27 first. But you really want to push to 37 for 25% extra gathering speed on everything. So a lot of skills these day on gathering commanders don't count gold in their resource collection increase. So thankfully superior tools does include gold and it includes gems. So that's nice. But okay. Gathering Commanders, 37. That's what you should have the map. Those are your primary Gathering Commanders. Secondary ones you're going to use, like Matilda, like Joan. Harder to level up, they take more experience, and harder to star up, and you want those epic stars for different commanders you're working. But what I have in the field right now, they're all Peacekeeping Commanders. Uh, Lohar and Ethelfled are the best because they add experience bonuses to... Barbarians and neutral units from their skills on top of what you get from the talent tree. So those are definitely two of the best. Mulan has it as well. And I think Diochan has it, but I don't think that's a commander uh, any new player is ever going to see because I think that was just a one-off kind of thing. Uh, but this is what I use. So I'm running these commanders. They don't have to be this. If I had Boudica, and I don't even know if I've unlocked her yet, to be totally honest. I haven't even unlocked her yet. Just haven't been lucky, I guess. Uh, Boudica is another one that is good at Barbarians. She doesn't give the extra experience, which I'll show here. But she is good at Barbarians. So definitely a commander you can use out there. But experience bonus is this skill right here. So using these Peacekeeping Commanders as primaries really add value to when you're killing Guardians or Barbarians. Because you're getting extra experience on both Commanders. And it says both Commanders right at the front of it. Ethelflaed does this as well, a little bit harder to level her up, and it's only 35%, but it's still not too bad. The reason you want to do Peacekeeping Commanders isn't just for some of the skills, but it's also for quick study. So this provides 15% more increased experience from the Barbarians or Neutral Units, Guardians, that you defeat. And then we'll talk about Trophy Hunter. So I'm going to age myself here in this game because Trophy Hunter at one point in time worked with neutral units so when you went and defeated guardians or if you defeated um, those uh, patrolmen in barbarian camps and keeps you got resources for doing that you didn't have to spend action points this is something they added later in the game which myself and many others complained about because the great thing about strategic reserve in the past i'm, I'm talking about a different event here but strategic reserve used to give you chests from guardians as well so it was very competitive people would run around in zone one and zone two the the hardcore players i'm including myself in that would hunt sanctums and altars all day long 
just to get as many strategic reserve chests as you can because le expertise in your legendary gathering commanders was, you know, just something you could do as a free to play without having to spend money just because of that event. As long as you were active and online, you could be win in that event. You didn't have to be at whale. And it's a lot of sculptures for those legendary gathering commanders and it still is. So a lot of people do still find ways to grind and I'll take a look to see. I wonder if he's still doing it. So we went to do altar guardians down here. Was it this one or the one above it? Sorry, it's the one above it. Oh, that's a good spot for it too. Is he still working it? Ah, uh, doesn't look like he is. So Borma, I can't say his name, was pulling this guardian and spawning his own barbarians in this area. They only come south of his castle because of the mountain behind it. They don't spawn over there. They only spawn in front of them. So he was pulling this with uh, Lohar and Sun Tzu, or I think Lohar and Ethelfled. I think I saw both at one point in time, but I think he's probably using Ethelfled mostly. Uh, to pull this Altar Guardian for free and capture the Barbarians as you drag it for free kills. Free resources, free gems. He was doing a really good job. It was impressive. That's a grind. If you're up for grinding, you can definitely do that. But here we go. So I use Peacekeeping Commanders. You don't have to. And honestly, if you're working hard on your PvP commanders, it's better to use like a Bjorn and Sun Tzu. You're going to actually get more experience than most commanders. Like Lohar is pretty close. 70% plus 15%. So he's at 85%. So it's almost better to use Lohar when he's maxed out on the second or sorry, third skill. But really using two commanders you're actually working is better. I like to do peacekeeping commanders because I you're going to need them at higher level for the higher level barbarians you're going to face in the near future. So you want those up so that you can keep defeating barbarians, not using as many action points because of insight. Reduces the amount of action points you pay up front. So someone like Sun Tzu, if he hits a barbarian, is worth 50 action points. Somebody like Lohar with insight will start at 40. And then as the game mechanics work, it costs two less action points every time you hit a Barbarian for a maximum of 10. So after you hit five Barbarians, you're going to be at 30 action points each time you hit a Barb. If you were using Sun Tzu and you started at 50 and you hit five Barbarians, the sixth one would be 40 action points. I think you get it by now. The reason, a second reason I like using Peacekeeping Commanders on Guardians like this isn't just to level them up and to level up the secondary commander. But I also like to hit these and then hit Barbarians afterwards. So by doing that, and I know I'm really kind of showing how much action point savings I think is beneficial to my game in the long term. But I am saving a lot of action points by attacking these first. So when I go and hit a Barbarian after I do at least five of these Guardians, and I'll show you, it's only going to cost me 30 action points per March instead of 40. One, because I'm using Peacekeeping Commanders with the Insight Talent I just talked about. But the other reason is because the mechanics work every time you hit a neutral unit. It costs two less, so you're at 30 the whole time. It's just another way to save. I don't know what the exact savings is on that. It's probably pretty minimal, but I do it quite often where I will continuously burn my action points after I hit a Holy Site, and that'll really help me keep those down without having to pay the initial extra action points to get started. And I will show you like right now, if I go to target a barbarian with one of these marches, it's at 38. So again, normally it's 50 with a peacekeeping commander with the insight talent, it's down to 40. I've already hit one, one neutral unit. It doesn't have to be a barbarian. I've hit one neutral unit and I've gotten down two more. As soon as this, uh, altar sanctum guardian is defeated you'll see it goes down to 36 that's just the way the mechanics work so once this is gone it's now at 36 and i will do that to a maximum of 10 which is five times and then i can defeat the gar uh, the barbarians for cheaper i'm going to clear this whole site i i don't like finding a holy site that's not completely cleared it's a little bit frustrating when you're looking for a rune quickly because you just want to log in grab a rune fire something off and log out. So once you come to a holy site and there's only two or three defeated and it's nice and close to you, it's kind of a bummer. Like just finish the holy site, obviously ask in Alliance chat first if anybody wants to join you. I think that's pretty key for most new kingdoms. 
you're in an older kingdom, it's likely that the altar and sanctum guardians expire. So you're not going to run into that problem. By the time this kingdom's in zone three, it's likely that will happen in most zone ones is sanctum and altar guardians will just expire because nobody's hitting them. Okay, so one last thing before I finish off this video is even if you get a commander to a max star, do I have one maxed out here? Probably not. Probably not at all. If I was to get somebody like Queen Tamar of Georgia up to level 20, having to use stars and the experience points, you're no longer allowed to put in tomes of knowledge. You just can't. It, the game won't let you because it's already maxed out. This plus button will be completely gone. But what you can do is you can still get experience on that commander. It didn't used to be this way. It used to be that if you defeated a guardian and you didn't star up, you would get no experience. But now, which is fantastic, I love the mechanic change. It was quite a while ago that this happened. But the experience that you get from those Sanctum or Altar Guardians or later on Shrine in the Lost Temple and into Lost Kingdom, they will accumulate on top of the cap, which is fantastic. It really is obviously up to a maximum of level 60. So like my Ethelfled in 2396, as you can see, I have 27 million experience on top of the 2.8. That is the maximum because I don't have the stars I want to invest in Ethelfled right now. It's not really worth it. She's already expertise. There's no reason to. It's at 27 million. So when I do start up this commander, I'm going to jump to probably 56. I imagine this goes to level 60. Once it's level 60, and maybe I will see that on this account, it will show me the maximum at an even number. And then obviously you can get experience on top of that. There you go, guys. That's it. So you can keep using commanders, even though they're not four star yet or start up higher, whether it's five stars or going to six, you can still defeat guardians with them in the future, knowing that you're going to unlock them to the next star level. You're going to get that extra bonus right when you level them up. So that does help a lot. And I'm looking forward to it on some of my other accounts where I have the same issue not enough stars but i have lots of time to do guardians so it works out in the end but there you go guys that's it for this video i hope you found it useful until next time have a good one later